This program is brought to you by the City of Oceanside. The following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. Hello and welcome. I am Kelly O. Davis, and I am pleased to welcome you to this edition of Oceanside Spectrum on our redesigned set on the brand new KOCT soundstage. This is truly an exciting time here at KOCT, and I am delighted and honored to be serving as your host of the all new Oceanside Spectrum, and even more pleased to introduce you to the outstanding lineup of guests kicking off this new season of KOCT's Oceanside Spectrum. First, we have the Oceanside Senior Center on our show to talk about the Seniors on the Go program. The Friends of the WRC will be here to talk about programs that they offer and all their fundraising events. The New Haven Youth and Family Services will be in our studio to speak about all the great programs they offer to the public. And next, we have a special segment with KOCT's Eileen Turk. We call it On the Scene with Eileen. And finally, we have the North County African Americans Women's Association on the show to speak about heritage, a stage play at Palmar College. So prepare yourself for Oceanside Spectrum right here on KOCT, the voice of North County. And welcome to the all new KOCT Oceanside Spectrum and our amazing new set. And for our first guest christening this moment with us, we have CJ Palmer and Quinny from the Seniors on the Go program right here in Oceanside. Welcome, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Yes, yeah, so it. Seniors on the Go. What does that mean? Seniors on the Go. So we are part of the city of Oceanside. Uh, we work out of the Country Club Senior Center in Oceanside, of course, and our program is to provide hope and healing through transportation. Um, and we do that for residents of Oceanside that are 65 and over. And from what I understand, you have a specific program mm -hmm. that goes out and actually, I think you have to be, what, 65 years and older? 65. So once somebody falls into that category, we'll give them an application. Right. They'll fill it out. We'll get them in our program and they're eligible for three different things. Uh, number one, uh, free rides to all medical related appointments. So that's a great thing. We have a great group mm -hmm. of about 20 volunteer drivers right now that'll come pick you up and they'll get you to where you need to go and they'll wait for you and they'll get you back home. Mm -hmm. Part two of that is we sell what's called taxi script vouchers, and those booklets are worth $20. They act as cash, but our seniors in our program can buy them for $8, so it's a great value for them. Yeah. And they can call up the yellow cab, and they can get wherever they want to go. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is we partner with a group called FACT, and when we can't get the ride, maybe they call and it's not quite in that time frame we can get them mm -hmm. to where they need to go, or it's a little bit farther south than we go, past Encinitas. FACT will come in and they'll provide a ride for a very minimal cost. $5 there, $5 back, and they'll get you where you need to go. Fantastic. Yeah. And from what I understand, Quinny, <laughs> you used to be a driver for the Senior Center. Is that right? I was. I drove for about three years. It was just a wonderful experience. The seniors are so lovely to talk to, and they so appreciate the program. Um, and so it was helpful for me then to move from being a driver to come in and work in the office because um, you knew some of the things to ask for and how the appointments would go and sometimes you have to wait a little and mm -hmm. sometimes you don't and um, it was just really wonderful and we're always looking for new volunteer drivers always so, yeah that's what i understand so can you give us a day in a life when it came to driving what does that that look like if someone is interested in volunteering and they would like to know more details on how that looks yes well you might start your day at nine o'clock in the morning uh, going to a senior's home and um, we would always get out of the car help them from the front door some seniors have a cane or a walker 
and you want them to feel stable and secure, help them into the car, crank up your GPS because you need to know where are you going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and hopefully they, 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 they know too, And hopefully too, right? they know too, but then. <laughs> and so um, you're going to arrive at your destination, help them out of the car, see if you can find where is that doctor, where is that dentist, you know? Mm -hmm. And so wait for them, have your little book handy, and sometimes you have such wonderful conversations just while you're waiting. It's really... So why did you become involved? What pulled at your heartstrings to get you to do this wonderful well, program? Well, um, my mother never drove, and it was so difficult to get to medical appointments or the dentist or anywhere. I mean, even the bank or the post office, you can't do anything if you don't drive and there isn't a lot of public transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I live in Oceanside, and I wanted to do something for Oceanside seniors. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. So CJ, yeah. how does one get involved? Yeah, just give us a call. I know the information is probably going to be up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Touch base, Quinny, um, Bob Q is a great part of our team as well. Mm -hmm. We'd love to talk to you about being a volunteer driver. Um, the other great thing about being a volunteer driver is there's a reimbursement. So we'll get you 58 cents per mile. Mm -hmm. and that'll help pay some That's of good. that gas bill and that right. uh, another little extra incentive to uh, get some more volunteers. We'd love for uh, people to join our team because the more volunteers we have, the more, more rides we can provide. Well, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you both yeah. for joining mm -hmm. us on our show today. And we will be right back with more KOCT Oceanside Spectrum. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Hi, and welcome back. We have the friends of the WRC, Colleen Barrett and Joanne Bowers. Welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Our Thank pleasure. you for having us. So the first step is, if I can ask you, Colleen, mm -hmm. the WRC, what is it that this organization does for our community? Well, it is actually a, an organization that's been in existence for 45 years now and they provide services to those that are survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault here in the North County. And so the Friends, this is an auxiliary group, group. Mm -hmm. and what do you do on behalf of this organization? Well, our sole function is to raise funds and we provide things for the children that reside in the transitional housing and at the shelter, and that is to um, help bring their lives back into somewhat of a normal state, To give them things that our children normally associate as everyday opportunities. So Halloween costumes, um, Valentine excursions. excursions and, uh -huh. Yes, different so, things, summer camp. So the friends, they try to bring back some, some normalcy mm -hmm. in a very tense? Disruptive. D disruptive yes. environment mm -hmm. in uh -huh. some they cases. Uprooted from their household and right. things they may have witnessed. Right. Mm -hmm. Not so great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, Joanne, can you speak to a little bit about like the Halloween costumes? In mm -hmm. fact, I think you made some some raised some money for a play. Was it playground, mm -hmm. play yard? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little so bit? So, at the transitional housing, which is uh, 23 apartments that is available to the women and their children um, as they have stepped away from a, to be it a des domestic violence mm -hmm. incident mm -hmm. or a repeated incident. But they're rebuilding their lives there, and this is the opportunity to bring their family into a different environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the transitional housing, there's a playground that is their only outdoor space. And it was in kind of sad disrepair, and we, our monies we've raised, mm -hmm. we went and we placed toys, um, and just generally gave it a big facelift so that the children are proud of where they are mm -hmm. and can have some pleasure and be outside and not be reluctant to go outside because it's kind of shabby. 
Right. So it's lifted it tremendously. It's right. very nice. This is actually the first year that uh, once we finished the renovation that they've actually invited friends from school over to play. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's a big because normally in, in, in well they never they never would invite individuals yeah. to come play they would play in the area but mm -hmm. they wouldn't invite others so this is the first time once it was finished that they had people yeah. come visit so it's our great pleasure to witness that and know that mm -hmm. um, our efforts and the monies we raise and the people that support our efforts mm -hmm. has gone to a very specific and, and that's awesome. yeah, yeah happy place happy yep. environment for them well, and speaking of fundraisers that mm -hmm. help to create these the play yards and rebuild these kind of things, mm -hmm. these programs, Colleen, can you speak a little bit? You had a, a you have a annual fundraiser. Yes, a, a yes we a, do. Every year we have a, a luncheon. It's called Half a Heart, mm -hmm. and that's where we raise the majority of our funds so that we can go ahead and and go forward and and make changes. And um, we go out, ask for people to attend. We asked for sponsorships here in the community and last year we were able to raise $9,000 at that event. Oh, fantastic. And so do you have a goal for this year? <laughs> yes. We're hoping for 10. We're pushing it just a little bit. It can be more. Yes, yes. it can. We're, we're open to accepting more. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. So what, what can someone do, if you can speak a little bit of your personal experience, Joanne, mm -hmm. how did you become a friend and how does someone become a friend of WRC? Oh, of course. Yeah. I became um, involved with Friends of WRC and in my interest in supporting a grassroots effort where there wasn't overhead, you know, that if I raise $5, $5 is going to get spent directly for the benefit of the, uh, the children in this case. So oh, about 13 years ago, right shortly after its inception, I started participating with fundraising for Friends of WRC. So, so how great. does one become involved, ah, Colleen? How yes. can one get become involved with this? Well, we do have a location on the website for the agency, which is, I know that you have that information, which will be going out. Mm -hmm. And they are welcome to um, join us. Uh -huh. Going to the membership. website. Mm -hmm. you Sign know. up for membership. Mm -hmm. And someone mm -hmm. from our um, board will contact us. Well, I want to thank you both for coming in today. Mm -hmm. The Friends of the WRC. And we will be right back. Use motor oil or cocktail or cocktail. Dispose carefully, you've got lots of options. Never the trash, the drain, or the ground. That's insane and it ain't safe and sound. Oceanside is a zero waste city. 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 Recycle used oil and filters at certified collection points in Oceanside. For locations, see greenoceanside.org. And welcome back. We have New Haven Youth and Family Services. We have Doreen Quinn and Chris, Chris Cates. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So New Haven, let's see, what is it? It's caring, equipping. And restoring hope for one child, one family, and one community at a time. Fantastic. So Doreen, tell us a little bit about uh, New Haven Youth and Family Services. So you just heard a little bit about our mission. Um, New Haven is 52 years old. We're located in Vista, but serve all of San Diego County. Um, we have a special education program, a school, a non-public school, which is publicly funded private education. We have a residential treatment program working with kids who have serious mental health issues, family dysfunction, um, trouble in school who might need some intensive um, mental health treatment. And then we have outpatient mental health, wraparound services, and therapeutic behavioral services where we can go into the family's home and help uh, them support their, their youngster and being successful in, in education primarily, but also remain in their home and um, not need any further psychiatric or outpatient intervention. So it is a residential facility for... Emotionally disturbed and at-risk youth. Wow, and yes. how many clients how many youth do you serve so at, at any one moment we're serving over 200 youth we have beds or capacity for 36 young men in our residential program 
Um, we're serving more and more youth um, in the public sector, in their homes, and in the community as a, mm -hmm. in, a, in a way so that we can prevent the likelihood of having to be removed from the home. Great. And so some of the other programs that you offer besides a residential program, you said that you had um, a school. We have a school. Our teachers are all special ed credentialed. And really what we're trying to do is establish some success in the student, teach them how to be a student again, and of course catch them up so that they're you know, at grade level and, and performing so that they're able to graduate. And uh, Chris, I, I hear you also have another program here at the Youth and New Haven Youth and Family Services, the, the Welcome Home Project. Am I saying that? Yeah, that's our capital campaign. Okay. And we've been working on that for some time uh, because our programs haven't always matched the product. Or sorry, the, the presentation hasn't always matched the product. Mm -hmm. And so we have a quality uh, service that we're providing people, but the exterior needed to catch up. Mm -hmm. And so we've been in the process of raising money. Uh, to rebuild the campus and do the exterior and we've been underway for a couple years now and we're actually right now if you came to our campus you'd see a lot of bulldozers <laughs> as we've just taken out the parking lot and so it's exciting it really needs to because the idea is the environment needs to be redeeming we, these are boys that are lost who need to come to an environment where they feel comfortable and they can be educated and get mental health services and we don't want the environment to be distracting. Now, is it only um, boys, is it boys and girls, or? We serve boys in our residential program and in our school, and then we serve both males and females in our outpatient programs. You know, just knowing a little bit about some of the climate here in North County, San Diego, with homelessness and some of our behavioral health issues, Tri-City having to previous, you know, shut down some things. Have you seen any uh, how does that impact what you do? Because you're in Vista, correct? Mm, that's correct. Yeah, how, has you seen more people trying to get in the program or just um, wondering? The, the youth that, that we serve really have to kind of work through a whole number of interventions prior to coming to us. And we're really at the most intensive end of mental health and, and special education services. Mm -hmm. So they kind of work through the whole system to get to us. And I think that... Um, the lack of other mental health or early intervention is certainly impacting um, youth and, and they're coming in in more desperate need well, for services. I, I think what you're doing is quite, it, it seems quite groundbreaking. People might think it's simple, but I know there must be so much involved. So how can someone become involved to help youth in uh, New Haven Youth and Family Services? There's a lot that we can do. We have a, a wonderful group called the Friends of New Haven. Uh -huh. who I would say deserve the credit for launching the, the Welcome Home Project mm -hmm. to get us going. Uh, and they put on a fundraiser every year. And so what we do is, is try to be relevant to these boys and provide more than just the education and mental health, but to create an environment. And it takes a village to do that. And so the, the community you know, stepping in and, and, and providing donations specifically for a certain project we're doing is essential. I think it's really important just to add that one of our uh, our major approaches with this particular population who has failed in a number of other settings that we knew that we needed to be transformational. We needed to be fundamentally different than anything else they've ever experienced. So we have a large wood shop. The friends have funded that. We have community members who donate shop equipment. Mm -hmm. Tony Gwen was a big supporter in the, in the onset mm -hmm. that allowed us to build this shop. Our kids manufacture furniture for sale. Um, and really it's a place for them to experience their first success. We have a culinary arts program, a catering program that our students run. Um, and again, it's just that whole sense of self-efficacy, a, a purpose for themselves, and, and the relevance for their education. And yeah, the relevance is key to connect the dots for these boys between school and work, because a lot of them come to school and they don't see the point in it. Mm. And we have to really grab their attention and help them see that everything they're doing does translate to something in the real world. And we can connect those dots through these vocational programs we find success. Well, I want to thank you both for coming uh, on our program to talk about all the wonderful work that New Haven is doing well, thank right you there for... in Vista. Thank you. And we will be right back with more KOCT Oceanside Spectrum. We need a claim number? When I started taking care of mom, I didn't realize the challenge of playing so many roles. But above all, I'm still her daughter. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. We're here to help. And welcome back. I'm your host of Oceanside Spectrum, Kelly O. Davis. And in the studio with me today, I have the pleasure of introducing Eileen Turk. 
and her our new special segment on the scene with Eileen. This <laughs> is I am I'm I'm really excited about this. I am really excited. You have to tell us what is this new uh, segment we're adding? What did you do? Where did you go? Talk to us. <laughs> well, Kelly, thanks for having me. Very excited about the opportunity to work with KOCT. And I was asked to go out in the field and see what's going on around Oceanside. And I had the opportunity to go out to Melba Bishop Recreation Center and try out pickleball. And it's a really fun sport for those of you who've never tried it before. You're going to see what it's all about. Really fun, fast, easy to learn. And looking forward to going out all over Oceanside in the next year and capturing fun events and activities that people can do that are in our backyard here in North County. Well, Eileen, that's the perfect segue. <laughs> Let's see this. I, uh, on the scene with Eileen, pickleball. Today we're on the scene with Eileen out at Melba Bishop Recreation Center, and we're going to learn more about pickleball. How you doing today, Mac? Oh, great. It's good Thanks. to be out here. Do you have time for some questions about pickleball? Oh, yes. Always love to talk about pickleball. All right. Let's get to it. It's a great social game as well as competitive game. You find so many people that you enjoy playing with and become pickleball friends. Oh, that's wonderful. One other question, how easy is it to learn? Usually with just a minimum amount of instruction, somebody can come out and within an hour be playing and having fun. And it's like a lot of other sports, to really get good takes time, but you can come out and have a great time really the first day you play. That's one of the great things about it. Can you tell me what days they play at Melba Bishop? Well, Melba Bishop, the courts are open every day, Monday through Saturday from 8 to 12. Um, we'll find there's 30 to 50 people out here playing each and every one of those days. And the courts are also open in the afternoon for people wanting to come out. What would be the website for more information? It's OceansidePickleball.net. I like the net instead of the com because it goes so perfect with the sport. Mac, thank you so much for the information. Hopefully we'll get some new pickleball players out here in the new year. I do too. Thanks, thank Eileen. You. You're welcome. Thanks for watching On the Scene with Eileen, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Pickleball <laughs> On the Scene with Eileen. Eileen Turk, you're a rock star. Ah, thanks. Yeah, this is, you know, uh, pickle, pickleball. Yeah. yeah, who knew? Who knew? It's so much fun, and who knows what I'll be doing over the next year. Uh, maybe tango on the beach, maybe senior dances, uh, master swim program, Oceanside and North County have so many fun activities. Who knows? Maybe I'll be on a trampoline or something. I don't know what Carly's going to have me doing. Can you, can you, at some point, we have to have you, you know where I'm going. You had a picture once with this big old boo font hairdo. I don't, you know, and I was like, I have to meet this woman and I met you. It's a perfect, this is a perfect segment for you because you just are brilliant. Always a shining light here in North County, San Diego for us. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you, Kelly. And we will be right back with some more Oceanside Spectrum. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to the all-new KOCT Oceanside Spectrum. And so for the final guest, we have the North County African Americans Women's Association, Constance Merchinson and Barbara Creighton. Welcome, ladies. Well, thank you. Thank you. And we thank have you. a fundraising event coming up for the North County African Americans Women's Association called Heritage, a play. Can you yes. talk to us a little bit about that? What's that? Yes, Heritage is a, um, an off-Broadway play that concerns uh, six girlfriends or sister girls who talk about the, the struggles they've had with their hair. They talk about how it relates to them as women, as lovers, 
as career people and what they've had to go through in order to have that persona, to have that image that their employer wants to see, but still maintain their own identity. Uh, they talk about the different types of hair and what they have to do in order to maintain their hair in the, in the scheme of things. So we think it's going to be something that everyone's going to enjoy. So Constance, uh, have, uh, being a black woman myself, I can completely relate to the hair mm -hmm. thing, but why this play, why this play for your organization? Well, why? First, uh, first of all, is we're doing it during Black History Month, so it is really apropos for that. And our mission, in, in a nutshell, is to make sure that we empower, inspire, and engage women uh, we want to make sure that through uh, health awareness, through their career awareness, that we provide some assistance to women and girls in North County. Uh, we want them to be know thyself. And in order to know thyself, you have to know about yourself. And our hair has been something that black women have taken pride in. Since before the early uh, 1500s, African women were distinguished by the braiding, or the shells or the coins that they put in their hair. And that, that denoted the status within their tribe and within their family. So we have taken great pains uh, when, the, when they were brought over uh, many years ago. They had to tie their hair up because of the sun and the damage. So now women are now expressing their, themselves. They are wearing their own natural hair or locks or braids or whatever um, because it, at some point in time, employers didn't want them to look too ethnic. Mm -hmm. So now women are embracing who they are. And so that falls right in line with our mission to empower, uh, empower to inspire, and to engage them in becoming their uh, themselves and their best yous, if, mm -hmm. you, if you would. So, so Heritage, this, this stage play, uh, Barbara, it, where is it, and is there any special details that we need to know about to go and see this? Sure. We're uh, having the play at Palomar College at the Howard Bubak Theater. We have plenty of free parking. Parking lots one and two will be open. There's also public transportation. If someone uh, wants to take the Sprinter, it runs every half hour on a Sunday schedule. It's a uh, $2 round trip for people that are 60 years of age and older, or adults are only $4 for a round trip, and that's from Oceanside Transit Center all the way to the Palomar College mm -hmm. drop-off. It's right across the street from the theater. No problem at all. Uh -huh. and, and where can someone go for more information uh, uh, about the play, about everything that you're suggesting or talking about? They can go to two websites. They can go to ncaawa.org and purchase tickets. Or they can go to Palomar. I'm sorry, I, I, was it Palomar at Well, they'll Eventbrite. probably have it on, the, yes. on there right. for us, but just mm -hmm. wanted to find yeah, out. Yeah, Palomar at eventbrite.com, okay. also to purchase tickets. Right now, we have about 149 seats left. We have been selling tickets, mm -hmm. so we really like people to get online, mm -hmm. buy those tickets. Show. We have two shows planned, in essence. We have a local we have three local stylists that are going to be participating. Wow. They're going to present a show at 2 p.m. Our doors will open at 1.30. Uh, 2 p.m. we'll have our local show, which you're going to love, choreography, uh, spoken word, mm -hmm. rhythmic music. And then at 3 p.m. we'll be presenting Heritage. Also, the organization will be uh, providing for sale just some minor little lunch things since you're coming right mm -hmm. after church. Probably. So all that to get them to come on down and come on time to right. Heritage. Yes. Be on time. On, on, time. on time. On time. Well, thank you, ladies, so much for joining us. And thank you. This has been Oceanside Spectrum. Thank you for watching. This program is brought to you by the City of Oceanside.